In this video, we'll be showing how to reassemble the meter area components with Ramafa stainless steel parts for the front tank on a tow behind hydraulic drive 1910 with a six run double shoot configuration. You'll notice the center and rear tanks have already been completed. Also, refer to our previous video where we showed the disassembly of the meter area. To get started, open your stainless steel hardware kit so you can determine which bolts are intended for each aspect. Check the parts list and familiarize yourself with the hardware provided for your installation. It is important to use anti-seize on all stainless steel hardware. Ensure that bolt threads are coated with anti-seize before installing nuts. Failure to do so can result in thread galling, also known as cold welding, which typically renders the bolt impossible to remove without cutting the bolt or splitting the nut. Using power tools to pull two items together with a stainless steel bolt and lock nut is practically a recipe for thread galling, so anti-seize is a requirement on all hardware throughout the installation. We'll start off at the top and work our way down from the tank. As shown in the previous disassembly video, our surfaces have already been cleaned. First, we'll install the stainless steel ladder bracket chute. It can take some effort to get it to slide into the bottom of the plastic tank. Once you get it in and close to position, line up the ladder and the ladder bracket and install stainless steel bolts. Next, apply fluid film and install the foam isolator gasket. Then with a second person or an adjustable stand, line up and bolt on the stainless steel meter mounting plate. You may wish to use clamps to assist in compressing the foam isolator gasket until you have the mounting plate firmly attached to the frame. Once again, just a reminder to use anti-seize. Stainless steel bolts should not be tightened quite as much as your average steel bolts, although typically you'll be fine with the OEM torque specification. Next, from inside the tank, we'll tighten the lower ladder bolts. While we're at it, we'll replace the upper ladder bolts with stainless steel ones. Now we'll prepare our new Armafa stainless steel meter housing for installation. Clean off and collect the parts you'll need for this segment. Install a new stainless steel spring pin in the end of the agitator shaft. Insert the shaft into the meter housing as shown and slide on the plastic agitators. Insert the left and right half width disconnect handles, noting the stickers. Line up the holes in the agitators and shaft and replace the clip pins to hold them in place. Bolt on the agitator crank arm. Place the meter drive engagement sprocket on the short shaft and fasten it with the spring pin. Insert this shaft into the meter housing and have a second person hold it, or place something against it so that you can slide the sprocket and sprocket key onto the shaft and fasten the set screw without the shaft sliding back into the meter housing. No washer is required between the high density plastic housing and the gear sprocket. The sprocket should spin freely. Position and adhere the one inch foam gasket on the top of the meter housing. Do not remove the adhesive backing on the upper side. Now we will install spacer nuts as shown in order to provide proper space for the foam gasket. If the two bolts from the ladder bracket chute extend beyond these spacers, cut them off. Next, lift the meter housing into position and fasten the nuts to hold it in place. Note that we intentionally did not remove the adhesive backing from the foam gasket as this is not required or recommended anymore. In the next step, we will assemble the double shoot manifold components. 
clean the manifold bracket and install the gasket. If the latch bolts do not fit easily through the punched holes, you may wish to remove a small amount of steel with a 532nd drill bit. Fasten the latches to the bracket with the supplied stainless steel bolts. Next we will take the plastic manifold components that we have washed and will be reusing with this installation. Line them up with the bracket mounting holes in the same orientation as they were removed from the original manifold bracket. Most of these parts will clip together. When installing the components for the selector slide, it is important to ensure their position in either position does not block any runs, but permits seed and fertilizer to flow to the upper or lower seed tubes as selected. This is outlined in more detail in the John Deere 1910 Technical Manual. Install the bolts as shown, remembering to use anti-seize on all threads before putting on the nuts. Don't forget to install the calibration bag tabs during this step, as shown. Reinstall the long slide bolts with corresponding hardware. These nuts should be snugged up so there is no play in the slide mechanism, which should not exceed 10 inch pounds. Install the center cover plate. This part will be sized according to how many runs your air seeder has. In this case we have 6 runs, but we would select a narrower cover plate if we had 8 runs. Use care not to damage plastic components or overly compressed gaskets, and in most cases bolts can just be snugged up, or for some harder to reach areas, just made wrench tight. Now we will turn the assembly over and install the slide stop brackets. If your slide stop latch does not quite line up, you can carefully give the handle latch a slight bend. With the slide pushed in, you should have a 1 inch gap on each side respectively. With it in these positions, tighten the bolts on the slide stops on each side of the manifold. We recommend you reinstall OEM decals so the operator can easily select the appropriate slide position for his operation. Clean off the upper side of the manifold bracket and line up and apply the adhesive gasket. Prepare the bolts for mounting the manifold assembly to the meter housing. With two people, Mount the manifold assembly underneath the meter housing and bolt it on. Next we'll assemble the bottom cover plate. The side with the two large holes will be opposite the chain drive. With it positioned as such, mount the plastic inserts with the raised protrusion facing the rear. These will line up with a notch in the manifolds. Do not tighten the screws yet, we want the inserts slightly loose so they will seat properly in the manifold. Now we can install OEM decals indicating the direction of airflow to avoid having anyone try to install it backwards in the future. Next, install the bottom cover plate and tighten the screws. Now we will turn our attention to mounting the hydraulic drive motor. Remove the lower bolt as shown. Place the side mount hydraulic motor mounting bracket onto the meter housing and replace the bolt just removed with a longer one provided. Install the upper side bolts as shown. Next we will pre-drill into the plastic to install screws to further secure the mounting plate to the meter housing. A 1364th drill bit seems to work well. Now we can install screws in each of the six holes we just drilled. The next step is to install the connection for the air pressure gauges, which we removed from the old meter housing. Next we can connect the pressure gauge line. Note that if your air cart does not have air pressure gauges, install a plug in the pressure gauge line connection hole instead to avoid losing air pressure. Now we'll attach the agitator connecting rod and tighten the bolts on each end. 
We'll also attach an adhesive clip and use a zip tie to keep the line from getting damaged, as shown. Now we're ready to mount the hydraulic drive motor. We'll install the bolt tucked behind the idler gear first, and then pivot on that and add the upper bolt as shown. Once those are tight, we can reattach the side shield support cable. Next, we'll install the drive chain as shown, and then connect the electrical cable to the hydraulic drive controller and install the side shield. Before operating the air cart, remember to grease both ends of the agitator shaft and the meter drive shaft as shown. We recommend using a polyurea grease. Due to the high density plastic housing through which these shafts run, the purpose of this grease is not as much for lubrication as to simply keep dust out. And with that, we'll conclude this video on the meter housing area assembly. Check out our video on replacing the seed tube pipes with stainless steel to complete your overhaul. We've tried to condense this video to provide a fast-paced overview of what is involved and some tips along the way. It is not intended to be a replacement for the technical manuals. Expect what you watched in the last 10 minutes to take at least 6 hours to accomplish.